Hello, hello, it is Ryder, and today I am here to deliver a prophetic word. Um, the message um, was interpreted from a dream that God gave me last night, and I want to share it with all of you. Um, before I get started with anything, it is always very important to test the spirit behind any any and every prophetic word and um, use discernment and also acknowledge that not every prophetic word is meant to be for you. Specifically, it might not be directed at you in particular. There might be another message for you or maybe there isn't a message. Just pray to God, um, ask God about it, and remember to use discernment before watching any of, the, any of these videos. It's always important to listen to God first um, instead of listening to people. Do what God says, not what people say. Um, with all that being said, this is a message that came from a dream that I had last night on the night of September 4th, um, and I am sharing it with you here today. And I'm going to read what I wrote down. Overall, this was a dream that was very dark, both in subject matter and in the setting of the dream. I do not remember the whole dream, just two distinct snapshots from the dream that are connected to the same story. I heard God tell me, as I was thinking about the dream, they are playing a dangerous game. I'll repeat that again. They are playing a dangerous game. And that is the title of this message for today. And here is what I recall from the dream. I was in this setting that seemed dark and really sketchy. I knew I had been there before and was returning. I had narrowly escaped the tragedy that happened there beforehand. As I was returning to this setting, I saw a bunch of dead bodies in the streets, and their blood was splattered through these streets. Even though I had not seen this taking place, I knew that the dead bodies belonged to folks who had been attending a Halloween party there earlier in the night, and they had been killed during the party. And as I was writing this down, I heard God tell me, spiritually dead. So I have that written down in parentheses. I felt a lot of anxiety in this place, and I knew that I needed to leave the area immediately because I wasn't meant to be there. Next, I was in the same setting, but I was atop of some high shelves, balconies, or scaffolding. It was connected to the buildings off of the street where the dead bodies were. I saw this younger teenage boy who wanted to basically play a version of The Floor is Lava um, in the space. And if you don't know what that game is, it's usually when you're jumping on like couches and pillows and stuff at home and you're just trying to avoid um, walking on the floor because the floor is lava. So if you touch the floor, you die in the game. Um, so the kid wanted to basically play The Floor is Lava in this really dangerous space over a the streets where all the dead bodies were from the folks that had attended the Halloween party. And he was climbing higher and higher onto more and more precarious objects. He wanted me to join him, so I started to, but then I realized how dangerous this was. I stopped because I realized that I was likely to hurt myself or die because of this game. I heard God tell me concerning this segment, they are playing a dangerous game. And that is all I recall concerning this dream. And now for the interpretation of this dream. The message behind this dream is actually fairly simple and straightforward, and it concerns the children of God celebrating Halloween. And I know it might seem early, but I'm already seeing all the Halloween stuff, the candy, the buckets, the decorations, the this and that popping up in like corner stores, like CVS, Walgreens, all that around here. So people are getting ready for it. So it is relevant, even though it's the beginning of September. Um, so here's what I wrote down. This is what I, I felt inspired to write down. Children of God, we should not be celebrating Halloween or any other pagan holiday that is detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Although we live in the world, we do not live as the rest of the world does because we have been set apart through the blood of Jesus to live a holy life. When you give your life to Jesus and are born again, you are called to live a consecrated life. Do not act like the people of this world, and do not do what they do, but rather live a separate life, a holy life, dedicated to the Lord. And that brings me to the first patch, pa passage of scripture that I was led to share concerning this message. It is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 18. So I'm going to find that... Here it is, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 18. I'm going to read it out loud. 
do your best to come to me quickly for Damas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tych Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might be full and, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. So what this is talking about is the Apostle Paul was talking about the struggles that he was going through and, had, and how most people had abandoned him and deserted him. But the thing that jumped out at me was the first um, line that said, the first two verses, 9 and 10, that said, Do your best to come to me quickly, for Damas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. And this applies to the message. When we start celebrating these pagan holidays, we start doing what the people of this world are doing instead of what God wants us to do, which is live a separate and holy and consecrated life, serving him, surrendered to him. When we do that, when we start living as the people of this world do, we are going to be pulled away from doing the work of the Lord. So there are souls that we could be saving that we're not. There are people that we could be helping that are in need that we're not. We're no longer serving the Lord, but we're serving our own fleshly desires. Now I'm going to continue reading what I wrote. You may want to celebrate Halloween because that is what the people of this world do, but the Lord urges you not to. Do not celebrate this demonic holiday, and parents, do not allow your children to celebrate this holiday. They may be sad or disappointed now, but they will thank you for this when they grow up and become warriors for Christ. Celebrating these pagan holidays and conforming to the customs of this world will lead to spiritual death, but living a holy life and giving yourself over to God's will will lead to eternal life. So ask yourself, would you rather watch some horror movies and eat candy tonight or spend eternity with the Father in heaven? I know what I want. I want to spend eternity with the Father in heaven. Choose the better path. Sacrifice short-term pleasures for eternal life. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord and lead a holy life. And that brings me to the second scripture passage that comes with this message. It is from Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. And this is the part where um, all the letters are getting sent out to the churches. Um, so this is Jesus talking to the churches, um, the seven churches. To the church of Laodicea, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you were neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. For this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And this message, um, this passage from the scripture applies to this final part of the dream. 
if you continue to live like the people of this world, living as a lukewarm Christian, and this is what God says, you are playing a dangerous game, says the Lord. You are playing a dangerous game if you continue to live like a lukewarm Christian, like the people of this world. God is patient, rich in love, and slow to anger, but do not put the Lord God to the test. If you believe in him and trust in Jesus as your savior, live your life in accordance with that and turn away from these sins, my child. This may seem innocent, but the consequences of these actions are deadly serious. Do not remain lukewarm. Set your heart ablaze for the Lord. Do not live as the people of this world do. Lead a holy life dedicated to the Lord. So that is all I have to say concerning this message. It's rather simple and straightforward. Do not celebrate Halloween. Do not act like the people of this world do. And do not be a lukewarm Christian. Set your heart ablaze for the Lord. With all that being said, you know, like I said at the beginning of this message, you know, ask God for guidance. Um, if this message applies to you, if you feel in your heart to follow through with this, then please do. Anyways, if you took the time to listen to this through to the very end, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.